This is my setup in the lounge where my computer is with all my music. And I've just purchased a pair of these Edify speakers. And we're going to have a look at those today and a brief listen, bearing in mind, as I've said, and many others have said a million times, you cannot judge quality of sound listening through the microphone on this thing, which is fair at best. But people continually ask me, can we hear them? Well, I'm going to let you hear them, but they're not representative of how they sound at all. Now, these are an active pair of speakers. In other words, they have a built-in amplifier. They claim about 20 watts per channel, undefined, but um, having listened to them already, I would say that's probably true. They have a universal power supply of 100 to 240 volts input, which clearly means it has a switch mode power supply. Other important things, it claims to have distortion lower than 0.5%. Now that is clearly the amplifier and not the speaker itself, which is poor by today's standards. Its claim frequency response is 75 Hertz to 18K. And get this, plus and minus 9 dB. Well, in hi-fi terms, that is absolutely awful. But it's probably accurate for such a speaker and I admire them for, for actually giving what would be a sensible figure for such a low-cost speaker. It also has a remote which is here and it contains nothing other than speaker muting and volume plus and minus. On the side panel of the main speaker you have volume, bass and treble controls and the obligatory LED showing you that it's turned on. That's just in case you can't hear any music coming out. Now, one thing I do have to say is it is very, very low noise. You can put your ear right up to the tweeter. It is absolutely silent, which is pretty good for Clark because it, it must have a Class D amplifier. Now, this is the rear of the active part of the speaker and you have two sets of inputs. One is slightly more sensitive than the other. Um, I'm running this from my computer sound card and the gain is way more than you need. But if you do need a bit more gain, you can use these sockets and that would be fine if you're running it from a telephone. Now this is the speaker output that goes to the other unit. They supply all these cables in, um, and the thickness of the cable, it's okay for the job in question because bearing in mind, these are not hi-fi speakers under any stretch of the imagination. If you're looking for an accurate sound, you're not going to find it here. Now, just a quick comment about the drivers. This base unit has insane amounts of movement on it and it, it produces a draft from here that you can feel probably a metre away. Um, so it does produce copious amounts of bass. I'm not expecting too much from the tweeter and in fact I would suspect when we open it up we'll find it's just being fed by a single capacitor because it doesn't seem to have a, a lot of work to do as the Base is also the mid-range unit and because it's fairly small it naturally responds quite high. So I suspect the tweeter just comes in at the last, I don't know, probably 6 or 7k upwards. One thing I do have to say is the finish of them is really nice. And this is actually solid wood, it's not veneer, it's actually a piece of proper wood. I was amazed to see that. And if you give it the tap test, it's quite well damped, as you'd expect from a solid. I suspect the piece on the top here on the side is probably particle board, but adequate for the job in question.
It does come with speaker grills, but I think it looks kind of nice without them, and that's how I would choose to use them. I'll show you the speaker grills later, if I remember, because I've put them back in the box. Now, I have to say is, I'm not being paid to say anything good about these speakers at all. In fact, I'm not being paid to say anything. I've purchased these with my own money, and they actually cost 117 New Zealand dollars. They were on special offer from the warehouse, which is an unlikely source to buy such things, but they do have them, and they were one of the lower prices in New Zealand. Now, this is the back panel, and there are six screws here. So we'll remove these. I think they're just small wood screws. And that should, with a bit of luck, expose all the internals, hopefully all attached to the back panel. Several minutes later, all the six screws are out. I suspect this one is not one that's needed to be taken out, but we shall see. Yes, it comes out very readily. Now, what can we see? You can see a wire caught up there. I think it's going to... Yes, look at that. I've come to the conclusion that there's probably another board deep inside because that is clearly the amplifier. So what have we got? Well, I have to say it's very nicely built can't complain about that at all beautifully made in fact there's the class d power amplifier and there's actually two other chips here now one thing i should have to say about this it does have oh that's interesting there's a crystal there i wonder why you need that so that is the Class D amplifier, and I suspect that one is for the signal processing. Because one thing I will tell you about this, it has extensive sound processing. The frequency response is not flat at all. And that's why I made the comment earlier that this is not a hi-fi loudspeaker. Now... If you're the per sort of person that likes extra everything, extra bass, extra this, extra that, this is the speaker for you. Because out of the box, when I first turned it on, I thought it so sounded bloody awful, to be honest. Um, no, I won't say that. because Well, I have said it, but it doesn't sound bloody awful. But what you need to do... The bass control needs to be fully off, completely turned off. And the treble control needs to be almost full. Then you get a sound that is approximating a flattish frequency response. With the bass control on full, it produces insane amounts of bass. And I suspect, as it stands, it's got some sort of EQ sound processing, i.e. bass and treble lift. Now, the bass control has a very wide range. The treble control, on the other hand, seems to only affect the extreme edge of the HF band. Hard to say without doing measurements on it, which I don't propose to do for such a uh, low-cost item uh, it doesn't make sense to do such things but when you turn the treble control it cuts a lot of treble and then when you start boosting it it just seems to make it tizzy the sound and, and it becomes sibilant like that so from that point of view I would suggest for getting a flattish response and listening to voice, you would need the controls set with maximum bass cut. But don't think you're getting bass cut because I think this processor here is boosting the low frequencies and the high frequencies. 
So the frequency response is actually a U shape. And if you put the bass control on as well, that bass cone just leaps out of the cabinet. I mean, there, it, I've never seen such a small unit with such a wide throw on it. But that's what popular sound, if, you, if, if all you're doing is listening to electronic music and or playing games and you want lots of low end and stuff, it's absolutely wonderful for that purpose. And it does get amazingly loud, I have to say. Um, so I don't dispute the 20 watts. I'll have a look at the chip in a minute and see if I can identify it. Um, let's see if we can zoom in on it and get some numbers off it. Oh, no. Bloody cameras. And the next job is to pull out this woofer. Well, base mid-range unit, preferably without damaging the cone. Right, let's have a peek. Oh, if we can get it out. Oh, I can't get it out. Here we go. Wow. think that's meant to be taken off but that is not a bad drive unit it's got a long throw as I've mentioned before and a huge magnet and the bit of bath wadding there is actually glued to the back of it so we won't take that out let's dangle that down there right rather annoyingly the screws on the tweeter are a different size to the screws on the base unit which is really annoying oh look at that as I thought, the tweeter has a single capacitor in series with it, which is a 3.3 microfarad 50 volts made by the famous Yakimoko capacitor company. <laughs> Well, that's exactly as I thought it would be. And it's literally just in parallel with everything is thrown at the base unit. And the tweeter comes off via that single capacitor. So not exactly a comprehensive crossover by any means. And that is the switch mode power supply in there, right on the bottom of the cabinet. As you can see the brown and blue wires coming from the power switch. And that's the backside view of the amplifier module. Well, I'm going to pause there for a few seconds because I have my coffee here. Uh, what's left of it? I'll try not to tip it all over my, <laughs> all over my trousers. So I'm going to drink this and then I'm going to put it all back together and then I'll talk to you again. these speakers are positioning is amazingly critical now obviously they're designed to fit on your um, bench where you've got your computer and um, that sort of thing as you saw them on the previous part portion of the video but I found like most speakers they sound better with open air under the cabinet now because this is not a hi-fi speaker as such, positioning them like that is probably impossible in the real world. But if you can get air under the speaker by mounting them off the ground or off the table, they do sound noticeably different. And I can demonstrate this fairly readily. I'm going to play a bit of um, white noise for you. 
And if you've got headphones on, you might like to bear that in mind. Um, and as I lift them up, you will hear the sound change from a sort of to a sort of sound. Excuse the crap um, imitation, but you'll get the idea. And the idea of pink noise or all white noise, it shouldn't have any defined frequency. Um, it, is, it is, after all, random noise. So if the sound tends to sound like that, clearly there's a hump in the frequency response. Now, when I play this, I will play it where I've mentioned before, the bass is turned minimum and the treble is almost on full. And when I lift the speaker up, and move it around you will hear I mean this this I should say any speaker will will have this effect um, but if it is off the table or wherever you've mounted it it does sound appreciably better and is nearer to a hi-fi speaker but just before I leave you just to summarize it's very well built speaker I can't fault the construction of it at all inside the, the electronics is beautifully soldered and laid out as you'd expect with the power supply at the bottom isolated from the um, it's not on the main board of the circuitry so let's have a listen to the noise and you can judge for yourself Well, I think for 114 or $116 that I paid for these, that's New Zealand dollars, I, th I would rate them pretty well. Um, it does not produce an accurate so-called hi-fi sound. It produces a very popular sound. And I don't think you would waste your money if you bought a pair. Certainly beautifully made, cannot fault the appearance of them. So I would rate them within the limitations that I've mentioned at probably, probably 8 out of 10. Certainly construction and appearance, 8 out of 10. If you're looking for a hi-fi monitor speaker, this isn't it. And on that point alone, I would rate it at 5 out of 10. Not much else I can say, really. Choice is yours.